as is a topic for this week, is don't marginalise yourself. Where someone talks about Muhammad Ali and, you know, his I am the greatest. I was old. I was too confident. Touch something that's been in the oven with your bare hand, it'll burn you. So for the next goodness knows how long, you'll wear three pairs of oven gloves. That option may not be there now, but what you can do now to like be ready for when it does come. This was the level of, of arrogance I was told I was not allowed to display. <laughs> Inspiration Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with my very good friends, Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, good, thank you, Lee. You will see on your screen, if you are watching us on the YouTube, Joe on Fire, which is from TikTok. We want to do a little push. We're doing good numbers there. Just head over, look for J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation. Give him a follow. Not only will you get loads of quality editing like that from Joe, but um, you can watch us live each and every week. Normally it's a Tuesday. Today it's a Wednesday. That's when we record the podcast and then we drop it a little bit later in the week. I think, Joe, you said we're going to make a concerted effort to let people know when we're going live so they can watch live, interact with the show, etc., etc. Yeah, 100%. So on TikTok, I'll be doing a little video when we go live, so I'll try and give you a live update so you can know when to join. And it's great that... Uh, that you've uh, joined which is great I think it was it's my prop joined which is great and Excellent. yeah thank you for that uh, for joining I think Dragon Balls have joined as well um, that fantastic which is all good thank you for that excellent stuff we do appreciate it and of course everyone out there listening watching follow us on youtube just search for jose Noy inspiration nation and of course oh i'd have thought on that i'll tell you when we're off air joe and of course everyone that um for following social media at listen to in listen t-o-i-n and of course if you are listening whatever is your preferred podcast platform we are there thank so, you bro. thank you rosalie for joining just so it's going to shout out to people who are joining so you get a shout out you're live on the podcast so thank you for that go on lisa sorry excellent stuff no it's good it's good this is what we like a bit of live interaction on a bonus wednesday so whose subject is it on the wheel of conversation today i don't know lee tell us who is the conversation wheel master this week hold on let me just spin the wheel this whole conversation <gasps> reminds, <gasps> reminds me <laughs> of every week <laughs> every week <laughs> Because we talk about it before. Don't give the secrets away, Ryan. You're usually the one that does it. I know, but I'm trying to be good. And you're trying to tempt me. It's good. People like some familiarity. It's good for a bit of that introductory conversation before we start challenging people's inspiration and motivation. And you guys just ruin it all the time. So anyway, the wheel landed on me for this week. So I think it's good. could be a theme actually i think this should, you should actually get one of them wheels <laughs> what i'd like to talk about we're not doing the battery chat <laughs> we're not doing the battery I, chat i agree ryan so i'm with you ryan no battery chat today bit of pre-air you conversation there that you can only get if you join us on tiktok live right so this week what i want to talk about and this follows in fact ryan something you did in our excellent interview last week with Mr. Mark Drager. Um, if you've missed that, just go back one episode in the archives. We've also got, if you go all the way back, I think to episode 72 is our first interview of Mark. Second one, hugely successful entrepreneur out there in the social media space. Um, gets on with Joe really well. Brilliant interviews. We would highly recommend giving them a listen. But one of the things, Ryan, during said conversation that you did was downplay what value you could add to not only that conversation but the podcast against myself and good old Mr Neuer there and you said that which is that there's a bit that's really good where you said like to listen on to what we do which I would not knock you on doing but that generally your contribution isn't the same of ours because you're much younger than ours us and what I would say as is a topic for this week is don't marginalize yourself um which before i go into it what are the thoughts on that particular challenge before i give any context around it because i'm i'm doing it in a good way not a bad way just so you know from ryan i think this is with you oh, for me um i can't remember exactly what triggered me to say it Do you remember um i think Mark asked for your view on a particular subject and he went oh, straight to you first. And I yeah. think you're, you're, it was almost like yeah. the, 
you know, yeah, your right. view didn't carry as much weight as mine and Joe's. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I said that because of the specific conversation piece, which I can't remember. I, it was something, I don't know if it was around the time he said that he, after COVID, thought about, um, you know, closing down the business that he had and um, kind of going, going rogue and starting something new. Um, and I said, I, yeah, I can't really remember. Maybe that is what I did. Maybe that is what I did. But you did. I'll, I'll give I, a bit more I, context. What I can't I remember that. I can't remember specifically me trying to dig dig myself under the carpet. Because it's absolutely not critical. It. Absolutely not. Loads of love on TikTok. I see. By the way, thank you, everyone. So this and this is a message for everyone. It's not just for you, Ron, because we can all do it. I know I've done it in the past, but it's very easy to put yourself down in your head almost <clears> or withdraw yourself back from something. And what it was about and why it's specific, and I want to draw on it, and it's like the second part of the conversation was specifically that you don't have as much experience as me and Joe do in terms of giving advice, et cetera, et cetera, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, which I suppose I don't want to divert too much off into conversation. So I just, I think I don't want this to turn into a positive affirmations conversation. I know Mark referenced this as well um, during the interview. Um, I think he did, or maybe it's another podcast I listened to. No, it is. I'm getting confused with something else where someone talks about Muhammad Ali and, you know, his I am the greatest and that he'd look in the mirror and he'd tell himself that and he would believe he is the greatest because he would tell himself he's the greatest. And the, the, the conversation of, you know, the, the person I was listening to, so I get mixed up between ones I listen to and ones I'm in, um, was talking about the fact that he he used the phrase, I am the greatest and said who said that. And everyone was like Muhammad Ali. But it was a group of 20 somethings who were never alive during anything Muhammad Ali did in his boxing career or anything else when he was a real figure. But it's such a positive impact from that phrase and what he did that people are quoting that who weren't part of that generation that you know wasn't really in their lifetime. Credit to Jeff Jarrett, by the way, on his fantastic podcast, My World. It's wrestling related. You should only listen if you like wrestling, of course, which I do. I love. Um, but it's that kind of positive affirmation thing and negative affirmation, if that's the right thing, is as powerful as positive affirmation. So logically, if standing in the mirror and telling yourself you are good, you can do this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, builds up that positive mental energy, then telling yourself that you're not good does the same so this this isn't so much about the positive affirmations as it is on not not negative don't marginalize yourself believe in yourself etc 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 um and i just think there was a bit Ryan, where you kind of with that and it would you know with the best of intent and everything and again i'm not being critical but in your head you almost withdrew yourself conversate from the conversation because you didn't think you had anything to add and then that became reality because of that thought rather than anything else and I just think there's something really important in not marginalizing yourselves. And then back to the specific on what you talked, Tom, it was about experience. And I think there's a real mix up that happens in the world between age and experience. Um, and the two aren't intrinsically linked. And I know this, you know, this has been a bugbear of yours in the past where people almost brush you off and say, oh, yeah, but it's just because you're young. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a grain of truth in what people say where you shouldn't just swipe that aside and think, well, it's not about age, I don't have to do anything. But there is a huge gulf between age and experience. And my example on this, I was going to look up something before I talked about this, which I'm just going to slightly look at my phone now, Joe. You'll notice your TikTok viewers go down by one. And I'll pad for time while I'm looking at this. But my example is going to be Steve Jobs, by the way. And whatever else Steve, whatever age Steve Jobs was when he got ousted from Apple. While you That's are fishing for time, um, I think it comes back to um, how do I phrase this? It comes back to like a wider development process that I maybe went through a few years ago, where yeah. I was old. That I was too confident. Cocky was probably the word that I was going to refer to as. Um, <laughs> border, bordering on arrogance. So I think, in a way, as part of my development over the last few years, I've just turned it on its head. Yeah. I can't be arrogant if 
if I underplay myself at everything. I can only surprise people. There's a scene in The Simpsons, which Lee will know. Um, and I can't remember what episode it is, but Marge is off trying to do something pretty good and she fails and um, she tells her kids to not aim for the stars because inevitably you'll miss and it'll be a harder fall. I can't remember the exact line, but it's essentially that. Keep your, keep your, uh, keep your aspirations low and you can't... You can't if you um, don't try, you'll never fail. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you keep your aspirations low and you can't be disappointed in yourself when you don't reach them. I think there's a part of me that's kind of adopted not that kind of mentality because I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm that negative. Um, but probably something, uh, you know, along that thought trail um, to, to kind of combat where I was maybe three, four years ago. And that makes sense. I think there's a thing as well. And I think, you know, I won't pick on and just focus on you all the time with it, but there's, there's a thing I always notice with, with development that I've been through and I've supported other people through is that when you, when you highlight a behavior or an action or something, whatever it is that people, people should work on, there's almost like a pendulum effect that they go from here all the way past that good middle average and all the way to the opposite yeah. end almost. And then you have to do that bit of work to rein them back in from the opposite to the middle. But it's like, it's like if you, if you touch something that's been in the oven with your bare hand, it will burn you. So for the next goodness knows how long you'll wear three pairs of oven gloves <laughs> exactly. take out of the oven to not hurt yourself <laughs> and then eventually you swing back right that pendulum i don't think ever stops by the way as a separate point, conversation actually, yeah. point i don't think it ever rests in the middle i think people get burnt both ways in this analogy and end up adjusting for a period of time i see that i absolutely that's a good view and i think you're probably on that way back with that and I suppose, and I know it's, it's the crossing over topics, but the experience in the age thing and Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs was 30 years old when he got forced out of Apple. So he'd built the company, gone through all the things that would come with that, all the learning and the lessons of growing a company, dealing with people, dealing with infrastructure, dealing with investors, getting into that heavy corporate environment, dealing with you know, the guy who was CEO of was it Pepsi or something who came in and pushed. And there's a lot of stuff he was exposed to that gave him massive, massive experience that me at 40 have not had to deal with a number of those things. And I've not had that experience. And there is huge learning for me to get from him at that. And certainly when I was 30, I've not gone, for, you know, that was, that's almost like pre this version of Lee. I hadn't yet stepped into leadership or development, except that I was a different person then, and we talked about that in previous episodes. So my experience then wasn't even what I've got now and compared to Steve Jobs was parallels apart. I just did a big uh, bar chart comparison of my arms there for those that are listening and not watching. Um, so for me, to, you know, for me to say, oh, it's because of my age doesn't really work because Steve Jobs is in a completely different position. It's because of what he's gone through. And in fact, what you'll find, Ryan, is there are people twice your age that won't have gone through any of the things that you've gone through in some of the you know career or life choices that you've made, where your experience far outweighs them oh, of because of what you've been exposed to and what you've gone to. And age, yeah. again, is completely not a factor. Yeah, On the yeah. flip side of it, there will be things in your aspirations that, you know, where you want to go, where simply because you haven't gone on that journey yet, you haven't experienced them. So it's it's fair to call out, you haven't got the experience of blah, 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 and you can only get experience by doing, yeah. but it's not directly bound to your age because that's down to your, partly your aptitude, how much you want to get involved in things, how self-aware you are learning, and partly how fortunate you are in, you know, who you get exposed to, what opportunities there are to learn, and then how you latch onto them. And that, it is a time-based thing, but it's not an age-based thing, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think so there's that's also... Where I, sorry, go on, mate. There's also a point that, as well, there'll be people that are younger than me that also have more experience than me. Like, whatever way you look at this, yeah, yeah. it flips 100%. both ways as well, right? So, um, I completely agree with you. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I, 
you can only you can only experience what you experience right there are there are there are caveats to that where you can put yourself in situations where you are going to experience different things and kind of go through different different kind of avenues and things like that of course but it is all luck a good a good, 50%, a, a good heightened a good heightened bit of self-awareness and knowledge of where to be at the right time a bit like um in football in terms a poaching striker for those of you that follow that sport in the right place at the right time to have those opportunities but being in the right place at the right time doesn't guarantee those opportunities so yes um and you know the, the gamer in me suggests that you're saying that in some aspects i can't do certain things because of my experience level and that is i can't carry on with the story until i complete some of the side quests that's how yes. that that's how that reads i love a so, good game analogy that's that's exactly that and like you said it's and one touch on because you said that you know being in the right time and there is part of being aware of that but it is and it was for years i said the title of my autobiography in the future would be 50 percent luck because it is it's there's you know some things come to you for reasons that are outside of your control and some you can see coming and some you can't but mm -hmm. then it's all about being ready and being prepared to seize those opportunities because there will be people who latch on to most things that come their way and take from them and there will other people who get exactly the same opportunity that comes their way and it just bypasses them either because they're not ready or it, it might even be they're not interested you know not everyone wants to go the same way but it's that 50 50 that yes you will get opportunities presented to you but it's what you then do with them that drives that forward and that's where the different level of experience come in so i so it's back to the don't marginalize yourself is that you might not always have the same level of experience in some subjects because you but what you will have is very different experiences in other areas as well and i think there is always value in any room of random people everyone will have a value to add it will be just be different values in different ways and different perspectives and just because someone's really got something with something doesn't then write you out of the conversation. That's your opportunity to learn as opposed to the times when you've got that value to in input. And I think everyone, everyone has that there. And I think everyone, you know, there isn't, again, I might be touching back to some of the stuff. I think I am back to some of the stuff Mark said and maybe really implied in my head where the first time we interviewed him, it was all about what I'm not doing, my weaknesses are dragging things down etc which is all good awareness but now he's much more in that place of right these are the things i'm really good at and i'm going to harness them and i'm going to go with that and everyone has that mix of things and i just think there's that human behavior that natural thing where we lend towards the you know we're not as good at that as this person over here so we're not so good rather than oh i'm really good at these things so here's where i can really add some value and it's it's you know, back to the, the, the topic of the don't marginalise yourself is there for everything you're not good at, there will be another one that you are fantastic at and people can take from. And it's it's not getting too drawn into what I'm not good at conversation and uh, what, you know, what I am good at or what I'm learning on or what I'm developing on. And even when you're not great with something, it's, well, what can I do with that rather than I'm not very good at that and I'm just going to withdraw. And I'm not saying it wasn't as extreme as that with what you did, Ryan, but it just kind of sent me on that trail of thought about how easy it is to marginalise yourself. Speaking of someone that did that a lot when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Obviously now I've just become amazing at everything, so there's nothing to worry about, but... This was the level of, of arrogance I was told I was not allowed to display. <laughs> Joe, what are your thoughts We've uh, we push you to the side of this conversation. It's a rare event. Well, I just wanted to listen because there's, there's quite a few bits and pieces I want to pick up on. Actually, uh, one of one of the things is that negative peace is quite a natural state of mind in any event because of yes. our brain. It's the first thing. It's actual neuroscience behind it. If you look at the research, actually, we, we actually default to negative because of our survival instincts. So that's the first thing I want to say. And the negative actually is actually more powerful than the positive. So we have to try and be more positive than negative to, to balance it up so you know there was a harvard review that said you know you, to balance off two negatives you need like five or six positives to like balance up the negatives the negatives are so powerful so that was one thing that was really really important that we have to make sure that we program ourselves to be positive i'm not saying to be you know to be like arrogant there's that humbleness that we need of course you know it's about learning um but there is that thing about strengths and knowing what your strengths are and ryan i totally agree with what you guys are saying around age age does not equate to wiseness. Now, repeat that again. 
age does not equate wiseness. It depends on experience. There could be people who are really young, who like Steve Jobs, you have got a lot of experience in certain areas. And, you know, there could be people really young that aren't wise and people who are really old that are. And the other way around, people really old that aren't wise and people that are really young that are wise. So age is not a thing. It's life experience. It's about how you approach life. So those are the couple of things. So I agree. We should never marginalize ourselves. We should recognize our strengths, but always be open for learning and be humble about it. But if we have expertise, we can draw on that and actually we can draw into our strengths. Actually, I can help with this in a really good way. So that's the other thing. And the other thing I was going to ask is a question. The question is, when are we ever the right age for anything, right? <laughs> I'm either too old to do that or too young to do that, right? That's another thing that I found people say, when are you ever the right age? That's one thing that I always hear. I thought, oh, I'm too old now. But when they were younger, I'm too young. I hear that a lot. It's, you, you can always be the right age, depending on what you want to do. You must have put some work in, right? Um, another thing you picked up on luck. And I'm going to quote Simon Scrib here because he says that luck is a skill and you get luck by taking risks. And that is a massive thing because you can actually make luck a skill. And I believe in that. I think that's a really, I used to think that, oh, yeah, you feel right. But to be in the right place at the right time, you've got to take in some risks to get there. Like the player in the box has to have taken the run in the box to get the chance to score the goal. So if you don't take risks, you're never going to get luck, right? It's like that whole thing. You've got to put yourself out there. And of course, there are some things like the lottery and things like that, which are exceptions to the rule. But a lot of the time, life will reward you if you take those risks that you're going to put yourself out there. And it may not be, it's not, I'm not talking about money, it's all about putting yourself out there. You know, like for me, putting myself out there on TikTok and whatever, there's a risk. There's been a lot of, a lot of, uh, negativity sometimes but there's been a lot of love so that's what we talk about so luck is a skill i'm just going to quote that that's what i can't remember website is that but listen back to that that's real quality um and preparation you talk about preparation absolutely prepare you know preparing for the opportunity to come so i always talk about this in coaching as well when people say oh i want to become a leader or, well what are you can do about it what are you, what are you going to expose yourself to to become ready for when that comes you're ready it may not be that opportunity may not be there now but what you can do now to like be ready for when it does come or were you ready to like grab the opportunity so yeah that's all i had to say on all of that and i totally agree you shouldn't marginalize yourself always like mark says now draw on your strengths recognize what you're you're good at and dive into that and do that to help others and to use it to help you prepare yourself um that's my view on it but absolutely you should never ever marginalize yourself you should always recognize what your what your strengths are but again it's not being about hey i'm the best at this it's just using them without having to say it in a really good way that uses yeah. it. Yeah, and that's why I was I was careful with my wording of you know being conscious of areas you can improve on or just things you're never going to be good at and you're comfortable with that. Yeah. And on the flip side, it's it's that it's being aware of where you add value, you know, not boasting about it, not being over the top, but what are the things that are really good where you can actually feel good from from you know from adding value, from helping people out, from contributing, from giving advice, whatever, whatever that is. Because as we know, Joe helping people is a, a a great motivator yeah and, and totally um you said something there. I was to up. serve no yeah oh my god it's what evan carmichael put there right there <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so it is about i think that's it i was gonna say about adding value that's what it's about when you add value people recognize you and you have to say anything because you add value um so you know that's the that's the real key around it if you go into conversation and add value if you go into a room and add value you know because of your strength then that's great you know and, and again you won't be good at everything all no you won't be great at everything you're not you're going to be certain things that you just are great and there's other things that you want other people can pick that up so i totally agree with that um 100 so yeah that's 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 my view and also i want to call i wanted to look up i've forgotten a few things this thing called pi which um which one is performance i've forgotten the i but the one is exposure um i can't remember what the eye is but it's not on it's it's, a, it's actually a, a model um and actually to get on to progress like performance is important the eye can't remember the exposure is really uh one of those things where you can like you're in a meeting you perform well you add value it's where you get exposure and people pick up and actually people will start to be your voice piece for you you don't have to say anything because you're doing it and that's how you you know get on and get your get your get your luck put yourself out and take risks right so yeah no good good stuff guys really good no, that's me. That's me done. So back over to, to you, Lee. Thank you. See, do you like how I thanked you out that I didn't have a conversation, but I've had this one in the can for a week, you see? I, bet I told you be prepared. 
I'm always, I've, I've got to stop this. It's like on Friends where Joey pretends he didn't do well at an audition and everyone knows every time he's faking it. I'm the same with this, aren't I? <laughs> yes. Good for funking subjects. It's great. It is really good. <laughs> You know, um, and, I, and I really enjoy it. And that's the whole thing, isn't it? Especially this one, especially because I think you're drawing on a, you know, one of our previous podcasts where where Ryan, you know, at this comment you picked up on it. And I think, you know, Ryan's actually, you know, picked up a, a great thing. We've maybe gone too much the other way, right? And I think that's a real, really good point. Um, and yeah, and I see a ton of growth from Ryan as we all have seen over since we've been doing this podcast for three and a half years. So it's always good. And, and we've got TikTok joining us. We've got loads of people joining TikTok. Saras, uh, I a one joined. I I really struggle um, sometimes saying the names, but thank you, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for the love as well. We had a lot of love here tonight, which is always. Can I good. just give a shout out, Joe, for one thousand seven hundred likes on TikTok for this podcast? Oh yeah, I can see that. It's amazing. Thank you very much, guys. I just had to zoom in on my screen to make sure that was a number. So huge appreciation again, yeah, for Joe. Jay is Noya, literally wearing just... glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh, lead his glasses he I, had can, yeah. zoom, I had to zoom in because I'm an old man I can't see it hang on let me look hang on oh yeah <laughs> thanks TikTok we appreciate your likes honestly it's really really helpful thank you so much it's not often I get <laughs> silence but that was one <laughs> <laughs> bravo <laughs> but yes thank you Sorry, Jay Noya underscore inspiration <laughs> Give it a follow. Loads of great content there daily. And as I said, Joe will be signposting when we're going live for the podcast. If you want to see us in action and a little bit of pre and post recording, we are on there on the TikTok course. Just search Jose Noya Inspiration Nation in Google. You'll find him all over the place, including YouTube, where we are. And we appreciate you listening downloading if you are still listening now it means you like what you are hearing please tell friends and family give us a review on whether whatever platform you're on that's what helps to grow word of mouth is what really really helps us follow us on twitter at listen to i n listen t o i n share when the podcast comes out all of that helps we appreciate all of it oh and of course i nearly forgot inspirationation.org.uk head over for everything to do with the podcast coaching service sign up for joe's newsletter all the archives and the merchandise store i'm just looking for it i've got it here mugs t-shirts hoodies the lot are all going on i've still lost it oh oh i've got i haven't got mine either it's in the cupboard Oh, I'm right. terrible worse at this, I tell you. But it's all there, T-shirts, hoodies. Oh. My, my beloved has been walking around the house all day in her Inspiration Nation hoodie. I think that was is yesterday. That the, is that the, uh, it was hot that... today, but it was a bit cold yesterday. So the hoodie is it, is it the punch in the face one? It is, it is. Yeah, I like that one. I think it's a really good, oh, it's a really good one. Yeah. You're Excellent. Good, um, so... That often gets a, a run out to the shops and even the airport the other week, I think. I really like that. I mean, I liked it, but you merged it right up in the old Mark Drager podcast. It was great. I, 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 I merged as much as you. You merged <laughs> it right up. It's brilliant. I try. Um, I try every so often. So huge appreciation. Thank everyone. We're all on our blurbs now. It's probably time to wrap it up and we'll be back. Can I just say something week. quickly? Uh, just the TikTokers, please go to the uh, to the profile for the link tree. You'll get everything nation there as well. Um, and before we sign off, I just want to get your takeaways from today's conversations. And also TikTok, we've got a big takeaway. Please pop it on the chat. Um, and I'll shout it out. If you pop it in the chat, I'll shout it out to you. What your biggest takeaway from this conversation? Okay, guys, over to you. Biggest takeaway from the conversation? Mine's probably that my glasses aren't good enough and I need to look into that. <laughs> no, not have a proper one, Lee. Come on, you can't have a funny one. Look at that. I even got a, a genuine laugh out of Ryan there. I like that. Yeah, only because it took me six well, actually, it took me about three years to make even go to the opticians in the first place. <laughs> and now Maybe you're actually considering going back. Maybe it's a podcast how to influence Lee, you know. Get That's it. it. <laughs> exactly right. Um, the bit that stuck with me that I hadn't really thought of before was just that bit you said, Ryan, about the pendulum's always swinging. It's probably just a smaller and smaller swing as it goes back and forth. And I think that I will be adding that to my repertoire on the whole pendulum analogy. So I thank you for that. Forever, forever will Lee think of me. That is. Indeed. That's what, things, that's what dreams are made of, that is. <laughs> uh, Ryan, how about your good self? My biggest takeaway is to start pushing the pendulum the other way, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, that's a very good thought. I like that. And yeah. Jose. Yeah, I like that. The pendulum just likes to just put it into the right, nice centre point. Um, for me, it's I think I'm going to take the actual title of the podcast. Don't mind myself, you know. 
Be that's confident. A cop, that's a cop out answer. That is. Come no, on. no, I'm gonna, just going to add to that. Hang on, hang on. Hold your horses. Hold oh, your no, horses. That's, that's the gravity of my message, Ryan. That's what it is. <laughs> I was going to say, just dial into your strengths. I think we all too focus on the weaknesses. It's always, always think, you know, because we're not going to be good at uh, everything. So, what are your strengths, and can you make them even stronger? That's what I would say. You know, what can you do to improve those strengths? Um, and you know, other people can help you with the other things that you're maybe not so good at. Maybe give it someone else who's got the strength in those areas. So, that's my big thing. I really like this because that is something we don't do enough of, um, and it's something that I think we all need to do on TikTok and on the nation. So, yeah, that's my big takeaway. Is I'm going to do this more, that I'm going to dial into my strengths more. Um, that's my big takeaway. So thank you right. both Ryan and Lee for bringing that to my attention. Great conversation as always, guys. We'll be back again next week, everyone. And again, TikTok, Jay Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation. Watch us live. What more could you ask for? Three, two, one. one. Inspiration Nation. 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 Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. later. We never get that right. But anyway, it was trying to, it was trying to play us. I want to know now what's your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So you can catch all our other Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. And also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.